Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to go through the hypershade a little bit. So what we can use the hypershade for, for like rigging and things like texturing and things like that. So to start off with, we've got a blank scene here. To open up the hypershade, what you can do is go to Windows, Rendering Editors, and Hypershade. We'll select that. And we'll just bring that in there. And what you can also do is go to Panels, Panels, and get Hypershade up there, but it's greyed out because we've already got it open here. So you can have it in a window here as well if you want. So what the Hypershade is, is it's made up of a few buttons along the top. If you click this file icon, you can open up this section to the left. And this is like a palette of things you can create. And it's all got, also got these three buttons here. So the left button shows the top view, which is things you've created. The second view shows your working area. So this is where you'll put nodes that you've already created. And this is where you'll be working on them, like adding connections. And the third shows both. So as this is like an empty scene, you've got your initial Lambert, your particle shader, and shader glow. So these are like default things. So any time that we say like add an object, as that's got the Lambert one, the, the default shader. So any time that we say like add an additional shader, so we'll add an anastropic. So there, we've added an anastropic, and as you can see, it's now in the hypershade. And not only will it be materials, it's any textures, utilities, lights, and cameras, and shading groups, and different things that you'll add in. So you can see the shading groups, it's already got the shading groups that are connected to them. And also like cameras, it's already got your initial cameras, like perspective, top, like your alpha graphic ones. So if you add any more cameras, they'll get added here, and the same with lights. So this is a way we can use it for some sort of like texture editing because as you can see so far it's when we added that anastropic material it's added it to the work area as well and if it hasn't done that so if your work area below is something like this it's not quite there you can select that anastropic shader you can either go to graph and um, add selected to graph so I'll add it to the graph or you can also choose these icons, which is input connections. So what connections are getting input to this? Input and output connections, and then just output connections. So if we do this, it's called graphing the network. So if we click that, we can see that this has got some sort of connection with its shader group. So that's the input and output connections that are going between these. Now, the way we can use this is if we use this palette here, say like if we go into 2D textures and click the checker texture as you can see it's added it to the textures because that's where it is in the utilities it's got the actual 2D placement node that's created with it but it's also added it to his work, our work area so we can move this about inside it by dragging the selection of it and left click and move and also you can hold down the alt key and right click to zoom in and out and middle mouse click to move about the window and it's the same for both views up here as well so what we can do now is now that we've got this in the work area you can also use this button again to make more room here right what we've got is we've got a checker texture and it's like if we wanted this to go into the color value of this anastropic shader what we can then do is get it up in the attribute editor where we can see the color go over the checker texture middle mouse click and hold and as you can see it's got this sort of drag icon you can drag it over to the colour and as you can see now it's applied that texture to the anastropic shader and if we go into the perspective view and press the 6 key for textured view as you can see it's applied it to the objects that have that shader on it so that's one way we can do that and as you can see it's added this sort of small green line and if you hover over it you can see what the connection is so it says check one out colour into the anthropic shaders one color so we can see what's actually going on there so if we delete that it'll go back to its normal default value so what we can also do here is if we middle mouse click this and drag it onto this it'll come up with options so if we don't want it on color we could also drag it on transparency things like that but if we want it to be something different we can middle mouse click this, drag it onto the shader and it will come up with a menu. So 
default will probably be colour, you can choose colour, different things that Maya assumes that the most things you're going to pick, like bump map, but you can also click other, and what that'll do is bring up the connection editor. Now if you haven't used the connection editor before, basically what this is does is the left panel is our driver, so we chose the checkered first, and your second panel is your driven, or what values are going to be affected. Basically what we can do is we can choose different things in here and connect them in here. So if we look, what it did for us before was out colour and put it into the colour. So if we do it this way, what we'll do is the out colour R goes into the anastropic shaders colour R. And the same with the G and the B. And that will do the same connection that we did. So it's doing the same colour. The colour, as you can see, is going into this anastropic shade, but we've got a problem inside the actual render view. I'm pressing 6 for textured view. As you can see, it's not actually showing up on the actual material, I mean, in the actual viewport. So connecting things manually through the connection editor might not update in, inside Maya. So Maya not may, may be able to know, but if we went ahead and rendered that, as you can see, it hasn't really affected it, it's still got that actual shader on it, even though the viewport's not displaying it. So because we manually made that connection, it won't be able to show it in the viewport 100%. So just bear that in mind that the connection's actually there. So it's not only used for things like textures, so if we go ahead and we can delete these, and we'll just assign the Lambert back on that. So what I'm going to do here is scale the sphere down so I'm going to move this sphere along duplicate the sphere by, sphere by pressing ctrl D and move the second sphere along again so we've got two spheres here and they've got translates and rotates so what we're going to do is go to modify freeze transformations so they're all zeroed out at the moment and we'll call this that, well it's p-sphere 1 and p-sphere 2 so that's ok so what I want to do is if we select these two spheres, go into our graph edit, hypershade even, go to the bottom view, the work area, and go to graph, add selected to graph. Now you can actually see that everything in Maya is actually a node. So P sphere 1 is actually a node that you can have in the hypershade, and this will have all its different values on it. So we can actually make connections. So if you're in a rigging or things like that, we can actually make connections in the hypershade. So another way of doing this is you can see the small little arrow on the right hand side so if you hover over that your mouse should change in this little box with an arrow. So if you do that and then you right click you can select, manually select some of the options. So it's so like if we want translate you can then go to the drop down which translate would you like. So what we want is, what we're wanting is we want the, the translate of sphere 1 to control the translate of sphere 2. And to do other ways to do this, you could group them, put this like as a child of that, so parent it, or use animation constraints. But you can also do this with the hypershade. So in order to do this, what we can do is either middle mic, middle mic, middle, sorry, middle mouse click and drag over the sphere two and do it that way, or we can right click in this little icon here, select this sphere one's translate values, and this will give you a little line go on to the second sphere's input and put this into translate. And basically what that's doing is saying the translate value is this also control translate value is this. So if I move this in X that will get moved in X as well and as you can see if I hover over you can check the connection. So now if we move this about as you can see in the view part over here that's actually happening. The translate of sphere 1 is getting duplicated to sphere 2 so if you look at the actual values in the channel box you can actually see that there are identical values so that's going on there and the coloration here shows there's an incoming connection but because we've connected this up this also means you can't actually move this sphere now because its connections are coming in from sphere 1 so you, you can't move that anymore now another way to get rid of this is you can either right click on these values and break connections or if you go in the hypershade you can select that link there and just hit delete so that's a way we can do that 
And also, if you want different types of connections, we could middle mouse click, drag, and over. So this is P sphere one. This is the sphere two. We could scroll down. And these are all the different actual attributes of this sphere. So if we found translate and found translate here, we can actually choose to do different values. So we could have translate x of sphere one connected to the translate y. So if we do that, now if we translate this in x, as you can see, it's affecting the y. So you can use things like that. And because we haven't connected anything else, we can still move it in z and y, and it doesn't affect the sphere, the other sphere. OK. So what we can also do is use nodes, different types of nodes, to affect what's going to happen in here. So if we go to utilities, and we will, there's lots of different utilities, and you can use them in different situations. But if we use something like a multiply divide node, now, we're not going to go into this node a lot for this lesson because it's just about hypershade. So, basically, the multiplying, multiplying divide node is going to take an input 1, input 2, and multiply them together and give an output. So, if I take P sphere 1, drop it onto the multi. So, actually, we'll click here, translate, take the translate, put it into the input, of the, uh, input 1. So now the x, y, and z equals x, y, and z. These values are x, y, and z. If we multiply them by 2, so we'll say 2, so multiply them, we will take the output, so right click here, output, and output, and put it into the input, so the translate of the second sphere. So essentially what we're doing there is taking the translate values of this, plug it into this node which multiplies them together, so it's multi multiplying them by 2, and plugs it into the sphere 2's translate. So basically, what we're going to have happen is if we set these all back to zero, it's going to double the values, what's going on here. So if we translate in y, so if say like we translate in y by 5, this value will times by 2 will be 10. And again, with other axes, we would set this to 5, this will also be. Oh wait, set it to 4. If we set this to 5, this will also be 10. So that's the way you can use some sort of connection, not just by connecting them, you can put them through a different node to affect the values.